The Challenge of the Yukon. Hun King! Hun Yoski! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, King, at that challenge. And justice ruled triumphant. The Yukon nights were long and dull for a boy of ten... But on this certain night in December, Jimmy Haven was bursting with happiness as he sat on a stool beside the man who, to him, represented everything that was heroic and adventurous. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police, with his big lead dog King lying beside him, smiled down at the boy whose face was radiant with hero worship. I hope someday I'll be brave enough to catch thieves and murderers all alone, the way you do. Why don't catch them all alone, Jimmy? I have King, remember? In fact, if it weren't for him to be here to tell about it. He's such a wonderful dog. Do all the Mounties have dogs like him? Well, no, Jim. It'd be nice if they could, but there aren't many dogs like King. I was just lucky, that's all. But you trained him yourself, didn't you, Sergeant? If all the Mounties were as smart as you, they... Well, it wasn't a question of my being smart, Jim. It was King's native intelligence that counted. Oh. Did you start teaching him things when he was just a tiny pup, Sergeant? Or did you wait until he was older? Well, I didn't get King when he was just a tiny pup. Until I did get him, he had a teacher who was much more capable than I to teach the ways of the wilderness. King learned things from her that had been invaluable. You mean a woman taught him? No, not a woman, Jim. His teacher was a wise old female wolf. A wolf? But King isn't a half-wolf, is he? No, he has a strain of wolf in him from his husky mother. But King was a wolf for a time by adoption. You've never told me how you got him, Sergeant. Please tell me the story. It was quite a long one, Jim. You see, I'm always on the lookout for good dogs. The dogs on my team have to be especially good because of the long patrols through the hardest kind of weather. They have to be fast and tough and strong. I had a friend down in Whitehorse who knew more about dogs than anyone I ever met. He raised them and supplied many of the sled dogs for the mounted police. Always made a point of calling on him whenever I got to town. One day he rushed me out to his kennels and I'd never seen him so enthusiastic. You're just the man I wanted to see, Preston. I've got a pup here that's the answer to everything you've ever wanted in a dog. He's kind of young, just got his eyes open, but is he a beauty? Oh, what breed is he? Oh, his mother's Kayla. You know her. A big husky I bought from Jim Tolan. Oh, yes. She's half wolf and half Malibute, with the good points of both. She's one of the finest dogs I've ever had. The pup's father is Silver Boy. Well, I guess I don't have to tell you about him. Champion lead dog in the North Country? I'll see you don't. Have you ever seen him? No, but I always wanted to. Lori, his owner, is a good friend of mine. That dog is one of the most amused I've ever seen. Bigger and smarter than any dog I've ever had the pleasure of looking at. Oh, here we are. Now, quiet, Kayla. Here they are, Sergeant. Seven pups. And you don't have to point out him, Dave. Look at him. He's half again as big as the rest of them. I'll get him for you. Now, keep still, Kayla. We're not going to hurt him. Here he is, Sergeant. Here's a dog that's going to be better than Silver Boy ever was. Well, ah, plenty of spirit, haven't you, you little limp? <laughs> Trying to act grown up before you cut your teeth. Dave, he's a beauty. I've got to have him. Well, Sergeant, he's yours. Ever since you saved my life two years ago, I've been trying to do you a favor. Here's my chance. Well, thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. When will this little fellow be able to leave his mother? Oh, about three or four weeks, I'd say. Uh, say, you're going north soon, aren't you? Why, yes. I hadn't planned to come back to White Horse for a couple of months. Well, I- I'll tell you what. I have to go up to Selkirk in about four or five weeks. I could bring the pup with me if you could meet me there. That'll be fine, Dave. Send me a telegram at Dawson headquarters before you leave, and I'll meet you in Selkirk. Something happened to me, Jim, when I took that pup into my hands. I wanted him more than anything I've ever wanted in my life. I waited impatiently for the telegram from Dave, and when it came, I got to Selkirk a day before he was due to arrive. But two days passed, Jim, and he didn't show up. Another friend of mine, Judd Ames, 
I was starting down to Whitehorse, and I decided to go with him part way to see if Dave had met with an accident. We'd been on the trail 12 hours and were traveling along a narrow ridge at the side of a mountain when Jed suddenly stopped and called out. Sergeant! Look, down there below the ridge. You got a sled? Oh, hi, Husky. Where, Jed? Boy, look down there at the bottom of the ridge. That's the sled turned upside down. Oh, yes, it is. And look, beside it, half under it. Isn't that a man? Yeah, you're right, Sergeant. It is a man. We're getting down there right away. Where are his dogs? In sign of them. Traces must have broken or something, and the dogs didn't go with him. Come on. Run, you husky. He's going uphill. Traces broke. The sled must have backed down on him and carried him over the ledge. I hope it wasn't Dave. Jed, help me lift this sled off him. Uh, He was carrying a heavy load. Uh, it is, Dave. Uh, looks as if his neck was broken, poor fella. He was one of my best friends. Wonder what happened to the pup he was bringing to you. There's no sign of his body. Hey, Sergeant, look. Here are some tracks. Where? What? Yes, they were made by a pup. He's alive. Must be around here somewhere. But so little he couldn't have... Oh. What's wrong, Sergeant? Guess we're too late. Look. Uh, wolf tracks. A wolf yes, must have... Yes, a wolf got here first. Yeah, but there's no sign of blood... It didn't kill him here. Probably carried him off somewhere first. Tracks lead up into that gulch. Look. Look at these wolf tracks, Sergeant. Here are some clear ones. Oh. That wolf must have been caught a trap once. The left front foot is only three toes. Yes, you're right. Uh, sure, too bad all three toes got here before you did. You were sure counting on that pup. Yes, I certainly was. Well, nothing we can do about it. It's getting dark, Jed. But I got Dave's body out of here while we can still see. the wolf and kill it, Sergeant? No, Jim. I didn't see how that would help matters any. And I had to get Dave's body back to Whitehorse and see that his affairs were settled. It took about three weeks. It was over 200 miles to Whitehorse. But on the way back, didn't you try them? No, I was put on a case that took me up into the Arctic, and I didn't even get back for over four months. Then, one day when I was on a patrol near Selkirk, I met Andre Dupre on the trail. Andre was an old French trapper. I'd known him for years. Oh, hi, Huskies. Hello, Andre. Sergeant Preston, for a long time I have not seen... How are you? How's the trapping coming along? I am fine, but trapping she's not so good. Oh, really? Well, I thought there was lots of game around here. This has been a good season everywhere. For me, too, it would be a good season. If once I could catch old three-toe. Old three-toe? What's that? She is big timber wolf that live around here. Oh. For more than a year now, I have tried to get her. But she has brain like human. Sometimes I think maybe she is half witch. Half witch? <laughs> Does she rob your traps? Way. She knows so much about traps. Someday I think she will set one and catch me, and they. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you know it's the same wolf that does all this? Because once I almost catch her. One year ago I set two traps. One the other. She almost caught. In one trap I find part of her foot. Now two toes are miss on front foot. Her tracks I would know anywhere. Well, how do you know it's a female? Because in the last few months, she has one young one with her. Oh? Huh? Yeah, the track they go together. That young one, he is smart like his mother. She teach him every trick. Between them, they kill so much game, there is nothing left to trap almost. Andre, you say she has a young one with her? We oui, for the last two months. Andre? I'm going to help you track down old Three Toe. You, Sergeant? Oh, but why? I have a special you... reason. I'll tell you about it. Well, maybe with you I could do it. But she is very smart, Sergeant. Me, I have tried to track her, but every time she fooled me. Maybe between us we can do it. You know, Jim, I hardly dared hope that old Three Toe was the same wolf that had taken the pup from Dave's sled and, by some miracle, had kept him alive. Gee. Most wolves would have eaten him, wouldn't they? Yes, Jim. But there was a slim possibility that Three Toe had had a litter of cubs and that they'd been killed by something when she was out foraging for food. She may have taken the pup back to replace them. Maybe the puppy was the same size. Well, we'll never know what really happened. Did you find Three Toe? I spent almost two weeks with Andre trying to track her down, but she was too clever. Then, uh, one day when she'd fooled us again by crossing some bare, windswept rock and leaving no trail... 
I decided it was no use. Andre was ready to give up, too. You see? She is smart like witch. She disappeared. I'm afraid I've spent too much time on her already, Andre. I guess we'll have to give up. Listen. Animals fighting. Sound like wolf and, and lynx. We're downwind from them. Come on, Andre. Let's see what it is. It is near edge of creek somewhere. Sacre bleu. What, what screeching? That noise is coming from that crack in this cliff. Uh, that is too small for Andre to squeeze through. <laughs> not with his belly. Maybe, Sergeant, you could do it. But not if you meet wolf at the end of it. Must widen out as it gets deeper. Andre... You stay here and guard the opening. I'm going to climb up on top of that rack. If the crack widens, I'll be able to see down into it. Be very careful, Sergeant. I will watch you. Jimmy, I'll never forget what I saw when I reached the top of that rocky cliff and peered over the edge of the opening. It was a perfect hiding place for the lair of three toe. Six feet from the opening into the creek, the crack widened, giving room for one of the fiercest fights I've ever seen. A big lynx had discovered Three Toe's lair in her absence and must have tried to kill the puppy just as Three Toe returned. The big wolf and the lynx were in a swirling knot of fury, and slashing in as hard and as fast as he could was a half grown silver gray pup who tore frantically at the flanks of the lynx. But the lynx was too much for old Three Toe, and the battle was slowing down to the point where I could get a shot at the lynx. I aimed. Sergeant! Sergeant! What happened? Guard that opening down there, Andre. Don't let anything out. I am watching. Was it three toes? Yes. I don't think she'll bother your traps anymore. You you shot her? Well, I shot the lynx that was killing her. The pup. He is still alive? Yes. I'm going in after him now. But three toe, if she is alive... I'm afraid poor three toe is past being dangerous. But that pup's going to be mine. It's a narrow opening, Jim. But somehow I squeezed through it. As I walked toward the scene of the battle, old three toe was breathing her last. The pup was whimpering anxiously beside her, but when he saw me, he staggered to his feet, growling as viciously as he could, but so tired he could hardly stand up. I made a small noose in the rope I was carrying to muzzle him, and I walked toward him slowly. Now, now, well, I'm not going to Steady there. Now, if you just let me get close enough to put this over your head. My hand. i got to get this noose on you. There, I've got you. Now, hold still, hold still. Are you all right? I got him, Andre. I got him. Oh, hold still, you little limp. Now, you're going with me. Grito, she is dead. Grito's dead, but this pup's certainly very much alive. Now, young fella, we can just get through this narrow place. There we are. Look at him, Andre. Isn't he a beauty? Sacre bleu. Ah, he is beautiful, we. But so fierce. Oh, oh, Sergeant. Sergeant, your hand. It is slashed to the bone. Yes, he put up a good fight for his freedom, Andre. But I like him, boy. Listen to him, Andre. Just five minutes ago, he was helping Three Toe fight a lynx. And he still has lots of fire and spirit left. Come on, young fella. We're going to like each other. big scar on your left hand came from Sergeant Preston? My left hand? Yes, Jim. You know, that was the first and the last time that King ever bit me. Wasn't it, King, old boy? <laughs> Look, Sergeant, he's licking the scar. Well, he's done that hundreds of times, Jim. I doubt that he knows just what he's doing, but I like to pretend that he does. <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents use dishes. They are sent to you each week at this same time. Hugh Holder speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>